Hello, and welcome, welcome back, back to Boo Paranormal Toledo. We have recently been on a path, a path of enlightenment and illumination. Join us in our Zen garden with Robert the Dao, Buddha, and Slimer as we embark on a journey, a journey of truth, which we've achieved through meditation and yoga. Over the past five months, I've been on a spiritual journey to learn the truth, in which case, I was turned on to a debunking community. I always knew that bullshit was going on. I just couldn't see it. Then one day, my eyes have been opened. Through channels such as Beardo, the world of Mr. Gray, Parbo, the shape. I have learned that there are others that were on this pathway before me. Grim Reaper thing that isn't the Grim Reaper, but just looks like the Grim Reaper. Hi, I'm Anne. And I'm Liv, and we're your Venice Kid. Today, we're doing what we like to call spiritual spankings. Pardon me while I take a pee. I always knew that these channels were up to no good, up to deception, but just couldn't put my finger on it. Until one day, I found the shape. Goose Raba. Goo oh this ain't working. I gotta go. Well to the top five blocks. Oh hey, welcome back everybody. So as you can see, today we're going to do a top five debunks. Um, these are in no way in any kind of order. These are just debunks that made a, a, a real impact on me. Uh, it's, it's been a pretty crazy journey the last five months since I started doing this. I, I don't even remember what I was looking up, but I just accidentally found the shape, I think, first. And watched one of his videos and was like, holy shit. There's there's people out there that know that this is bullcrap and they're actually showing why like i've i watched some of the paranormal channels and was like how do people buy into this stuff like i knew it was fake but i just couldn't put my finger on it i couldn't figure out just what was what was off i mean i knew i had thoughts and things like that but then you know people like the shape and beardo and a whole list of others um really opened my eyes to a lot of things in the paranormal world so these debunks really, really made an impact on me in one way or another. And like I said, there are no special order. And I'm definitely going to do a part two to this video because I didn't get to everybody that I feel that I'd like to get to. So this is just the first five and we're calling it a top five. And it kind of is because these are, these are some banger debunks. I should probably give you guys a little insight as to my background too. So I've been doing paranormal investigations for quite a few years. Uh, but I've mainly focused on on residential cases that are all private. No one will ever see them because it's not fair to disclose the identity of people and things like that. We've put out some things before, you know, some stuff that we thought maybe was interesting we've showed, but we'll never ever give the identity of a client away. So let's just go ahead and get right in this. Let's start right now. No. No. So 
Shape visits uh, Mindseed TV in this one. I'll make sure I get this door closing on camera. Hey, look, I closed the door. I'm gonna lock that. Okay. Let's make sure I get on both cameras, to, you know, that I, I'm locking the door. I wanna make sure I say it too. Hey, I'm locking the back door here, people. I'm closing it because you clearly see me do it on camera. Oh, hey, do you got it on the other camera too? I want you. I want you to record me walking away from the locked door with the other camera too, just so people know this freaking door here was closed. So that's a really, really common tactic that a lot of these fake channels use is foreshadowing. You can almost guarantee if they've really focused on a door and make a big deal out of it, something is going to happen. Oh, now we're at the point of the video where I gotta back up everything I said. Oh, when he backs up. When I said that? a banger at the bunk, I gotta be able to back that up. Right? It's a, it's a good now, one. I'm going to show the clip in its entirety first, then we'll break it down because I want to see if you guys can catch what I call it because it stood out to, stood out to me quite a bit. <clears throat> this is so good. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Freaking shh. Sh what the f the f was that? Bro, that sounded like a fucking. It was either in here. Okay, look at the counter. Bro. What the f door is open? Wide open, bro. As they walk up to the back door, you can see both camera angles. You can see Casey and Casey's buddy falling behind him once again, but you can see both camera angles as they're going to the kitchen, right? So, uh, now the reason I bring that up is because what I just showed you, that's the last time that you see Casey's camera, not Casey's, but the other guy's camera. Casey starts walking to the kitchen toward the back door but you don't see his buddies. It's as if his buddy disappeared, you know, because his buddy did disappear. You can't be under a sailor door and also hold a camera. So everything that he's saying is, is very, very important. Just, I'm just gonna let this roll through. Casey heads toward the kitchen. Pay attention to this spot right here. Hmm, nothing there, especially not no big yellow bottle. But anyway, this is the last time you'll see Casey's buddy too. Now, they're getting ready to head toward that door. Dude, I'm literally f***ing shaking right now. What could have been? I have no idea. Are you sure you closed that door? This door was locked, bro. There's a whole lot more to this than what I'm going to show. Hello? Oh, my f***. What the whole f*** was it, dude? What the I have no it? idea, bro. The f***ing thing moved, bro. There oh, where'd that come mm, from? Where did that come from? <laughs> it wasn't there earlier. It wasn't there right before you went out the door, so how did that bottle get there? Behind me when I turned that corner. Something was lifting it from underneath, bro. What the f are you talking about? Oh yes, you saw that right. Now, let me ask you this. How can a bottle of cleaning products appear and disappear between shots? Huh, how, how does, how, how can that happen? Now, if you're new here, there's something called continuity. You know what I'm saying? Another important thing. what lesson. continuity is, it's no different than an actor doing a scene. They do the takes multiple times. And sometimes, they'll be a cup. They'll be doing a dinner scene. There'll be a glass there half full. But then the next day they film the same scene, they'll forget about that and the cup will be a quarter of the way full. And then when you're watching the movie cut together, you see the glass shrinking. The water content keeps shrinking between shots. As I started watching more of these guys, I started watching videos a whole lot different. I look for things like that now, you know, things that don't make sense where the continuity slips. Uh, you know, I look in in windows and mirrors, you know, for reflections of, you know, say a third person or something like that. If it's a two person team investigating, um, I look I look at things a lot different now, and you'd be surprised what you catched. Let's get back to the shape in this one though. This is this is really good. I. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what they would have done with that bottle of Lysol to just put it in there. Uh, were they cleaning it? Well, you'd have to watch the video to understand why they would be cleaning things off. But, you know, go to Shape's channel, check this whole video out, check everything else out that he does, and your eyes will be open too. You will be enlightened. That proves they do multiple takes of this because... There's no reason that cleaning bottle should have appeared as that was happening because it happened so fast. There's a, unless now, unless whatever's in the 
you know, down in the cellar, as it was lifting it, it threw it through the cleaning products into the kitchen and it landed right there on the counter. Uh -huh, I'm just kidding. This proves that they filmed multiple times, which means, say it with me, it's fake. So the shape is really, really good at putting out banger debunks. Like that's, Mindseed cannot argue with that. In fact, in another video that we're going to show in even today's video, uh, Mindseed TV just wants you to believe that their stuff is real. They still defend it, even though things like this exist. So here's another little fun fact about me is that people may not know this, but I up until recently was a manager for the Warren Legacy Foundation. We have to, uh, there is some confusion in the debunking community. Everybody thinks that the Warren Legacy Foundation is the same as Nesper, which is what Ed and Lorraine originally started. Um, it is not the same. The Warren Legacy Foundation was started by Lorraine and the, her grandson, Chris McKinnell. The goal was to help people anonymously, not any of their, you know, Amityville stuff or the conjuring case, you know, where it's all public. This is all done on the down low. Never, ever have they shown anything from any clients. So this, this next one, this one really, really hurt me. Like I, I I've always been told that this photo is real and I, I'll save my thoughts till the end because I, I definitely have some thoughts as to what's going on here. But I, another debunker that had a big, big impact on me was Kenny Biddle. No, no. If you don't know who Kenny Biddle is, you really, really need to look, go to his YouTube page. I'm going to put the links of all these pages in the description, but you need to go and, and watch his stuff. That guy, he should have been an attorney because he lays out a court case for every video that he makes and he really debunks a lot of the equipment, um, a lot of stories. And it, as much as it kills me to say this, I think he's right on these photos, but we're only going to look at one of them today. I want you to go look at the video that he made about this and to watch the whole thing because I'm only showing a very, very short portion of it. Kenny Biddle is just, he's one of the best. Um, I believe this video is on his, he's got a couple different pages. One is the Center for Inquiry. Uh, he, that's where he works. He's, he's actually a paid professional debunker. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Wish I had that gig. <laughs> so let's get into, let's get into Kenny Biddle. Hey there, my fellow skeptics. Welcome back to another episode of Ghosts in the Machine. In this episode, we are going to be talking about the Amityville Horror case. And not the whole case, don't worry, I'm not going to rehash the entire thing and go into how it was a hoax, because it was. I'm going to go <laughs> Kenny, into actual two photographs, not a two fan photographs of the we're going to look at, which is really the only physical evidence that has ever come out of this case. Yeah, as you can see, Kenny is not a big fan of the Warrens, which, hey, that's fine. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. That doesn't mean anybody's got to fight. I mean, there's so much drama and bull crap. It's whatever. I mean, Kenny is very, very good at what he does. I disagree with him on his thoughts on the Warrens, but that's cool. We can disagree. It's all good. That doesn't take away from his knowledge and the work that he puts into what he does because uh, he he puts in the work he can back up what he says all right so the next picture we're going to get into is the the most famous picture that came out of this it's the demon boy uh picture or ghost boy picture depending because i've searched for it both ways and it comes up to the same picture so i'm going to pop this on screen so you guys can see I think everybody's so seen this picture. The story point. behind this is that the photographer that was there that night on March 6th, he had set up a camera on a timer. And I don't know what kind of timer. I don't know if it was a remote timer or if it, he just came up and snapped the picture every so often. I'm not <coughs> sure because those details are lost. So Gene Campbell set up a camera in the corner here on the, on the landing. And he set it up with many rolls of film. And that's a common uh, description. That's a common... Uh, story element that many rolls of film were, were shot many rolls of infrared film and that's important that's an important detail because he switched from regular black and white film to infrared black and white film see what i'm saying he brings up a lot of points that are very very important and he'll show in the video why we're not going to show it in this one because again this video is i don't know 30 minutes or so uh his original video but 
It's one thing, and I didn't include this, I don't think, in the clips that I selected for this, is that it's important to note that there are only three people in this house at this time. I always thought this happened when the whole group of them were there, because earlier that night, a whole big group of people were there. But at this particular time, when this photo was taken, there was only three people. There was the reporter, Paul Bartsch, the, the assistant for the Warrens, and publicist, I should say, and then... Uh, Ed Warren. So there's only three people in this house when this photo was taken. But I like the fact, too, that, you know, Kenny will go back and try and use the original cameras if he can. He does have a camera collection, he said. Um, the original type film. You know, one video he used a, you know, a VCR tape camcorder. So, I mean, they, he really does go above and beyond to try and recreate, you know, the accusations, I guess, that he makes. So the majority of paranormal people, I guess the believers in this uh, this story, believe that this is the ghost of little John DeFeo, Johnny DeFeo, um, which was one of the boys of the DeFeo family that was killed. And there is, you see a portrait of him. This is not a photograph. This is a, a painted portrait. I don't think it's Johnny DeFeo. Um, not at all. One, because I don't believe in ghosts. And two doesn't look like a kid to me because when you look closer at this you can see that there's the rest of the body through the railing you can see through the railing slat, uh uh supports that you see a shirt look here. at the pattern and on the shirt the shirt looks to be a plaid shirt so it blows my mind that i've never looked at this picture this this way until he points it out once he points it out it's so obvious that there's a person with you can see his body through the railings. I've never noticed that before uh, in this photo. Let me uh, let me get that up there a little bit. There you go. You can see that a little bit more. You can see the stripes of the plaid shirt. Now there was another person there that night that also not only wore a plaid shirt but was in that room, and that would be this guy, Paul Bartz. Now Paul Bartz is described usually as another investigator there with uh ed and wayne warren that, that he was part of their crew or their team and he was there investigating the house which he probably was uh, but we also learn from a later newspaper article and i'm going to put that up on on the side here that he was also their agent so paul bartz was ed and lorraine warren's agent so it's uh, you know i really hate accusing people um, directly of a hoax, especially because um, Paul Bartz is, is not with us anymore and he can't defend himself. Neither can Ed and Lorraine Warren. But he, it does show a little bit of motive because he had a reason to make sure that, you know, something might happen or if something was mistaken, like, you know, maybe a picture These of are all him really, really good as points. a ghost, was he keeps the mistake going, you know, instead of exposing it he keeps the mistake going because he has a vested interest in it. So uh, this is not new. This is not uh, something that I came up with. I want to make that clear. I didn't discover this myself. It's been out for years where people have thought that Paul Bartz was the person behind this, um, this photograph. In fact, I was able to get in touch with a person that uh, wanted to remain anonymous. He, he, he didn't want his name out there. So, but I did talk to him and verify that, he did communicate with Paul Bartz. He sent this email out to him uh, before uh, uh, Paul Bartz passed away and asking if he was indeed the person in the uh, in the photograph. And the response that we get from Paul from Paul Bartz is interesting. It, it says a lot without actually saying anything. Um, and, and it says here, I am convinced that we experience an extraordinary cunning and evil presence in that house and attempted to verify it with photography and other means. The image in the photo you mentioned does resemble me and I know that Ed, now deceased, and Lorraine went on record including national TV stating it was a ghost. Because I have great respect and admiration for them I will say no more on the issue allowing the legend of the most haunted house in America to continue. So yeah, he doesn't openly admit that it's, it's him, but he does give you enough of the information, enough information to say, hey, it was me, but I'm not going to say it because I don't want to embarrass my past clients. Um, that's what I get from that. 
Kenny don't mess around. He does his research. You have to say that. And um, that is a that is. He's right. That's pretty much admitting it without admitting it. I mean that that letter says a lot, and that was the guy that I believe is in the photo. So in addition, I want to just put up a few comparisons here because, you know, even though I said this was not new information, and it's really not, you know, but like I said, a couple for the past couple of years, people have been saying that this is the gentleman in in the shot and you know what when you do it side by side like this it really does look like him yeah. i actually overlaid it um it does, but it doesn't look good look at the hair part it, it look still at the looks shirt. a little fuzzy because this is so fuzzy and this was a little bit more sharper image but side by side you can see similar face especially up here the part of the hair where the hair goes off to the side here it's exactly the same it matches up perfectly so that's all i'm going to show of that because like i said this is a very very long video but definitely worth the watch go check it out because kenny does a lot of recreating and talking about the difference between the black and white film that was used in that photo that he overlaid that's black and white film whereas the photo of the the ghost boy is in infrared film and he takes plaid shirts takes pictures of them with both films you can see that the infrared turns that shirt into the shirt that is on the boy. Um, but definitely go check that out. And like I said, this one really, really had an impact on me because I, I never questioned the Warrens. And we should question everybody and everything. So I guess a couple of theories I have on this photo is one, I, I believe it's absolutely Paul Bartz, who, you know, Kenny lays out the case. He convinced me. He changed my mind. I 1,000% believe that he's right. Now, does that mean the Warrens faked it, or does that mean Paul Bartz faked it, or was it a mistake? Was Were they just wrong? My personal thought is, is that him being their publicist realized this was a very, very public case and could be good for their you know notoriety and all that other stuff. I think he did it on purpose to you know from a publicity standpoint like he really really wanted to get a, a picture of a ghost in the paper so that's my thoughts it did ed tell him to go do something funny i don't know i i wouldn't want to speculate on something like that it's 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 possible i mean if, if i'm being honest with myself and everybody else it's it's i believe that that's a possible scenario but anyway clearly this was a big debunk and kenny has way more on his channel about the the equipment uh, other things with the warrens other things with other people he's you know he goes at the warrens a little hard but i mean that's that's his right to and his opinion so who am i to say he can't do that i'm nobody <laughs> no. There's lots of money to be made in fake paranormal, right? And it's not just the fake ghost hunters that are cashing out. Oh, really? So another debunk video that really made an impact on me was this one. Uh, this one's brought to us by Crow of Judas, where he interviews the Ouija brothers. Or, no, I don't think he interviewed them. He, he featured them in his video where they debunked the DR60 recorder, which everybody's paying thousands of dollars for these stupid things because they're flawed. Uh, Zach Baggins from Ghost Hunters or Ghost Adventures uses it. Uh, a lot of the the YouTubers use them because it produces results. And I think it's a it's an important point that the quality of recorders that are being used in these ghost hunts really matters. So I've used this recorder for years. I've got two of these. They're good recorders. They're not cheap. They're eighty bucks, I think. They might be more now, but I've used those for years and I'm wondering why I get EVPs on that one. However, on this, this zoom recorder here, which is a lot more money. I don't think I've ever caught an EVP on that recorder. Are we, are we 
showing, I don't want to say fake, but are we passing off things as EVPs that aren't? I mean, I hope I've never done that, especially doing residential cases. I don't want to pass something on to a client that I'm telling them, hey, this is a ghost voice when it was, you know, me shuffling my feet on accident or something like that. I don't think I've ever have. I mean, I, it's possible, but, um, I, the only EVPs that I've ever shared with clients are good, solid class A. Okay. That's, that's a voice in there. You know, those are the ones that I show to clients. So, but you know, Crow is a fantastic guy. He's, uh, I've talked to him. He's given me advice on a few things. We've talked a couple times. And so I wanted to include him in here. And this debunk is another very, very important debunk. This is actually, the Ouija brothers actually debunked this. Crow has a, a very good video too with um, Kenny Biddle on the DR60 recorder. So again, we're not going to show the whole thing, but we got to show a little bit of it. So let's get into it. Welcome to the Crow Judas channel. Good to see you. Glad you're here. And you know what? My friend, I have a good friend that has a DR60. And he let me use it. <laughs> it That's is crap. Right. Got me a beautiful DR60 right here. And we're going to do a couple of tests. And I can't wait to see the results that I get from this DR60. Not sure if you guys know or not, but the DR60 is a magical recorder. See, it actually can talk to spirits a lot easier than most recorders. And don't you dare question it. Don't you dare question it because no other opinions are allowed. So as you can see, Crow, uh, he likes his mask. I think it's hilarious. It's great. It's uh, His sense of humor is, I mean, to me, it doesn't offend me, but I know some people probably get offended by it. Uh, he's It's very um, rated R. Let's just say that. He's, he's definitely not making content for kids, but that's great. I love it. I think it's hilarious. So I'm going to ask him a few questions, and let's see what kind of crazy results we get, okay? And believe me, it's definitely worth the three thousand dollars. Oh, for sure. Oh, hands down. All right, guys. Let's see. Where's the, where's the record button? All right, here we go. Shh. Are there any spirits in this room with me? You suck ass. See. <laughs> There's bad. Can you confirm or deny that you moved my flip flop the other night? Oh God. Let's go and play today people i'm going to show you so we got steve from the ouija brothers evp recorders are so unreliable uh we've been using this now since august uh, of 2017 and at first when we got it we thought wow you know we're getting some you know really good results until i went back home and I looked through the footage and, you know, because I know, you know, I've been doing video editing for years and, you know, I've, I've messed around with the sound and I enhanced the sound and stuff like that. We was getting responses with this thing using a specific... So that's mode. one thing that I've never done with my Olympus is I've never looked for this mode that he's talking about. I'm assuming it's probably a quality setting. In fact, actually it is because he says it here in a few minutes, but... Um, but this is just so if you guys don't know, this is Steve from the Ouija brothers. They are, it's, it's a very, very good channel. It's, it's a look into what real paranormal investigation looks like. It's not dude, bro. It's not, you know, but these guys are funny. Uh, they, they put out good content without actually capturing a lot of paranormal evidence. Uh, you know, a lot of times there was one episode recently where they never even went inside the building. It was, it was really, really funny. They're out walking through this muddy field and never made it into the building. But uh, go check the Ouija Brothers out too. It's they just hit a hundred thousand subscribers. Uh, it's a very, very good channel. You don't hit that many subs without putting out good content. So uh, go check them out. Let's get back into what Steve has to say about the recorders. That makes anything sound like an EVP. The simple shuffle of a foot. Someone rustling the coat, um, you know, and you don't even realize you've done it. And then you listen back using this EVP that a lot of paranormal investigators use and they swear by it. And I'm going to show today that a lot of their captures you can debunk. <coughs> now, I'm not doing this video to 
you know, try and expose people or anything like that. I just basically want to tell you guys um, and just let you know that the, these, these things are so sensitive and a lot of the times when you're watching these videos and you're thinking, my God, that's one of the best EVPs you've ever heard. In fact, there's a more logical explanation and, you know, we don't want to trick you guys, you know. Um, I love this video. This video, I'm telling you, is so good and it's so refreshing to see somebody trying to logically debunk themselves as they go. So Steve makes a really, really, really good point. They're not going after anybody with this, but this is something that they learned. They just, you know, we've, we all learn stuff as we do this. And, you know, when I saw this video, I was like, holy crap, how many EVPs have I thought were EVPs that aren't? And, um, but it's, it's not because I was trying to trick anybody or, or anything like that. It's, I just didn't know. I'm glad I came across this. You know, to, it's it's very important that we know our equipment and the flaws that it has. You know, he's right that you know some of the some of the people know the the equipment is fake, or prone to capturing false positives. Some people definitely know that and use the crap anyway. If especially now in 2024, if people don't know that the DR60 is crap for paranormal investigations, it's on. It that's just being irresponsible because there's enough information out there that. They should know that those recorders specifically are garbage. Number two. So this next video is from the side eye guy. This is another really, really important debunk. Like I. I was blown away when I saw this. This this actually this pissed me off because and it features Mindseed TV again. It, parts that I cut out of this video is where Mindseed is going after the debunkers for calling them out on their bullshit. And it's absolute bullshit. This 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 debunk blew my mind for real. But here again, I encourage everybody to go watch the side eye guy. His channel is fantastic. He's he's funny. Uh, he's a very, very intelligent debunker. You're, he, the guy does his research. And, and with everybody else, if they're ever wrong, they'll say it. If, you know, if they get a debunk wrong, they'll say it. And it, another little story about Side Eye Guy is that there was a little small, very small, I don't even know if we'd call it a beef, but he had an issue with the channel. The channel fired back. And literally, they just investigated together a few nights ago because they talked it out like, you know, grown ups, and it's all good. They're friends now. So, I mean, that's cool. <laughs> Very un YouTube like, but let's get into the side. I guy and this one, like I said, this one just blew my freaking mind. I can't believe the extent that mind seed TV went to, to get a paranormal video. Hey, Hey, segways. In this video, we have a new Airbnb Mindseed Discovery, an update from Alice, who is the owner of the not New Orleans plantation of a haunted plantation in New Orleans, Louisiana, and Cynthia L from the schoolhouse video reached out to provide a written statement about her experience of Casey staying at her Airbnb, which was not in North Dakota. This is part three of this whole Mindseed Airbnb debunking saga. So it's probably best you go check out my other two videos where I prove Mindseed lie about the locations and violate certain terms and conditions of them staying in Airbnbs. So as you can see, the side eye guy likes to do his research. As he said, this is one part of a multiple part series on Mindseed TV. Um, so this first part of the video does get into the older ones, but then he comes across something new in this and you're, you're, you're going to be blown away if you haven't seen this already. We know that there's people out there who try to dedicate their time to debunking us and proving that all this stuff is fake. Um, it doesn't matter what anybody says. Um, it doesn't matter what anybody says. The arrogance says. of that guy. Jeez. My name is Richard Cavanaugh. My wife and I bought a house about 45 years ago. We had two sons and we raised our sons there. 
We had a, a little playhouse built in the backyard with a swing set and everything, and you know, we watched them grow up in that house. And uh, in, in the emails, you said that um, over the last like year or two, you, you guys have been kind of experiencing some, some strange stuff. <laughs> so look at the screen. Casey and his paid actor are rolling their scene together. This is all bullcrap. They rented an Airbnb, hired actors, came up with a story of a family that lived in this haunted house that isn't haunted because it's an Airbnb, and did a whole freaking episode on it. I, I, that's next level fake when you're paying actors. Like that's, this blew my mind. I, I couldn't even believe it. One of the creepier things was, I don't know why I woke up. I see my grandson swinging on the swing. It's like three o'clock in the morning. I was shocked because he's not supposed to be outside, and this is a seven-year-old. Really? <laughs> uh, it, it was so creepy. I, I, I just had a knot in my stomach at this point. And if you block love out of your life, there's no way for either to find its way in. But life has a way of bringing us to the places and the people we truly need. So the guy is Richard Forbes, and he's an actor. <laughs> so they've not only done it once, but at least twice. Hi, my name is Sarah Evans. I live in Florida now, and I've lived here. <laughs> How did you get that PS5? Because I just came from the store, and they told me I'd have to reserve it. Another actor. We know that there's people out there who try to dedicate their time to debunking us and proving that all this stuff is fake. But when you're there in person and you're experiencing this kind of stuff, um, it doesn't matter what anybody says. Um, it doesn't matter what anybody says. I mean, that, that takes guts to rent out a place, create a story, and then look in the freaking camera and lie about it. And not only that, go after the debunkers and say that they're you know, dedicating their lives to taking them down and like, dude, cause you're full of shit. That's why that's, that's pathetic. That is, like I said, that is next level fake. That is mind blowing. Okay, so we cannot make a top five of debunks without including Cody and Satori. This had to be one of the biggest debunks of the year. A lot of people were on it. I made a video about it. But I think Mythos really, really, I, I think is the spearhead on this particular story. He, uh, he made a lot of videos about it because, as you'll see, he truly believed that Cody and Satori were real. I mean, he was and just, you can see progressively and I'll, you know, I pulled some clips from different videos, how he goes from believing them to like, eh, I don't know, to you freaking liars, you fakers. Like, you know, it, it really upset him because he was, you know, invested in it. If that makes any sense, he really thought that they were real. And he thought, you know, a lot of other people were just being hard on him, and, you know, you didn't really prove anything. And then he ends up, you know, really coming up with a big debunk on these guys. So, so that's why we've included mythos. Like I said, none of these were in any order. This is just debunks that impacted me over the last five months. People who were in the paranormal YouTube world might have seen them a few years ago on Exploring with Josh and Seth Borden's channels, but they have been now introduced to the world by Sam and Colby. The thing is though, they're coming under a lot of scrutiny lately because of their method of contacting the other side. Anybody's here, I'm gonna ask you to make that same noise you just made, maybe let's say four times, to let me know you can hear me. One. 
two, three, four. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So I, I honestly think that Sam and Colby were tricked. I think they know the truth now. I've said that many times, but they can't. They, they, there are certain fights that you can't do if your goal is to just be famous on YouTube, which they said on Joe Rogan. That is their goal for doing this. They just wanted to be famous. That's it. Uh, but I believe that they were legit fooled, you know, when, when this happened. Now, if anybody goes there and thinks that it's real, like, you're just, you know, you've got your head buried in the sand because there's so much out there that prove that what they're doing is bull crap and fake. It's, I don't even, you can't even make an argument anymore unless you're arguing with people that just don't want to listen. So. Might be a bit exciting. I have to say, I love them. I think they're such a cool, awesome, likable couple. And guys, I believe them. When I watched the Sam and Colby videos and their reactions, I 100% believed it. No doubt in my mind. I even told my friends and family, come on, you have to watch these videos. Check this out. But I will admit it's dropped down a little bit from 100%. Now, I'm not talking bad about them or hating on them in any way at all. But as most people know by now, Cody and Satori are being debunked for doing the toe-knocking method that some people are theorizing online. Yeah, it's uh, way more than a theory now. <laughs> and uh, you're a big part of why people know the truth. It's all over. No, it's coming from right here and right here. About here. That's how it's done. I have my own theories on how this isn't actually possible as I've tried it myself and I can actually make the knocking noise, but not like what's going on in the videos. Uh, not super loud and fast. So, I know. Okay, hold on a second. Not from different directions and areas in the room, not sounding like it's come on. Cody and Satori, put an end to all of this. Please put out a video doing your method, but not asking the spirits for any parlor tricks and a performance, just like a normal video as you would do, but maybe bare foot or laying down. So as you can see at this point, he's still on the fence with whether or not he believes that this is real or not. Now, keep in mind too, this video was made months ago. This was shortly after everything came out about Sam and Colby, or uh, Cody and Satori. So next he made another video on it, and let's watch some of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! This is not how this was supposed to go! What have I just seen? I did not want to be a debunker, but I've just got to call it how it is. So this is what I like about Mythos and a lot of debunkers in, in general, is that you can, he's just putting himself out there. He's being 100% completely honest. You know, he's, he was a believer. Now he's starting to think, oh boy, this is not gonna, this isn't gonna end well. I think he knows at this point. Let's go ahead and watch more of this video. This is, uh, again, like I said, a second video in multiple videos that he's done. Oh no, guys, guys, I don't know. I don't know about this one. This doesn't look good. I am not a debunker. I don't even want to be a debunker. I just want to watch things for entertainment. But um, the big thing about these guys is we can show you this amazing thing. So everyone's like, wow, it's real. So when people start coming out saying they're liars, our cackles go up and we're like, what? The debunkers that I've watched out there have said this and that, and I've always defended Cody and Satori and said they are real. Debunkers, guys, just chill out. Um, you're not proving they are fake. You're proving how it could be faked, which you could prove anything could be faked on the internet. Don't he brings up a good point here, too, in that just because something can be faked doesn't necessarily always mean it was faked. Now... A lot of these YouTube channels that, in my opinion, once you're caught faking, everything else that you put out and put out before that is suspect to faking. Uh, so it's a good point that just because something can be doesn't mean it is. Only thing that made me now think, hmm, 
was actually their own response. Sorry guys, my camera's steaming up, but I'm just going to carry on. About Cody and Satori's um, response, I really did think that they were going to come out and say, you calling us fake? Right, here we go. They were not fake. But their response video made me think, oh no, this is not good. And I actually did a video on it, the previous video that I've uploaded, if you want to check that out. But after their own response video, I've now become even more suspicious. And seeing this clip, oh guys, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Wow, we're really steaming up. So as I said, he was kind of really the spearhead on the whole Cody and Satori thing. A lot of people made videos, including myself. Um, I, I made one, and I think the second one that I made was after they were on Project Fear. And Project Fear should have known better. They should have known because there was enough info out there at that point when they put out their episode with Cody and Satori that it's bullshit. They should have known. But they put their episode out anyway. And then they kind of did this little half-hearted interview. I mean, I, I, I shouldn't say it that way. I mean, they you can't go at them like, you know, hardcore necessarily because you got to try and ease into it. But they they had them on the ropes many times and just let them go. I, 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 I don't know. If you've seen my last few videos, I've dropped some hints at finding a clip of Cody definitely looking like he's knocking his feet. Now, I wasn't sure whether to post it because at this point, does anyone care? Are people getting bored? But I think that's what Cody and Satori are hoping for. People to just forget about this drama, let it blow over, and they can carry on doing what they're doing and scamming people. Well, another reason as well, guys, is I just didn't want to be mean. They've been getting a lot of hate, and I've been like, guys, stop giving them so much hate. But to be honest, I can see why people are getting so angry. Just for example, right, I've got a little cousin. She died at 10 days old. If they said to me that someone on the other side was looking after her and stuff like that, and then it turned out to be fake, I would be pissed that they used her like that. There's a lot of really, really good points in that little segment. He... People don't realize, people say, well, why do you care if they fake it? Well, you know, all that stuff. People don't realize that there are real people that are impacted by people like Cody and Satori because they want to have this belief that there is, you know, that their loved ones are okay in the afterlife. And Cody and Satori coming along and faking like they're communicating with them, it's cruel to do that to people. Uh, there's many stories documented through other channels where, in fact, Mythos has a, another video on that where, you know, it has a really, really bad ending because of Cody and Satori faking things. So it does impact people. And guys, don't say they don't use kids, though. They only bring up the elderly, which doesn't make a difference anyway. I know for a fact they've done it with little children. It's f***ing gross. Especially with children, when they start yeah. talking about, you know, Amazing I was on things, the Titanic you know? and things like that. Like, that's interesting. Yeah. To me. Also, another reason, guys, why I'm posting this is because I've actually been contacted by two of their friends and I've been told, yep, they're fake. I've had a few saying, Mythos, I don't know where you stand. Well, I haven't known where I've stood. It's been a crazy month or so. I've said I believe. Then I've seen some things and been like, mm, I'm not sure if I believe. Then I've seen something and been like, yes, it's real. But now, like at the end of the video, you're going to see what I've seen, which I just can't deny. They are fraudsters, they're fakers, and they've fooled us all. So there you have it. I mean, how, how can we do a top five without talking about the Cody and Satori thing? There's a lot of other people coming out on this now. There's a lot more videos coming to surface. Uh, Bad to the Bone Paranormal is another... Um, I don't want to... They're not a newer team, but they're, I guess, newer on YouTube um, with this kind of content. Uh, there she's really 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 doing a lot of research on this whole thing too finding old videos talking to their friends I mean, there's there's so much more to this story since this video came out So there you have it everybody like I said, this was not a my favorite debunks in any kind of order these were just Five debunks that were really really good that made an impact on me and I left out a lot of other ones because I'm going to do this again. Obviously, Beardo's not in this. Purple, Mr. Gray. Um, there's others that just aren't in this one because I wanted to save them for another time. But I think, you know, a lot of people are doing a lot of good work, and these are just five examples of it. As I said, go 
check out their channels. I know a lot of people, like I said, my eyes were opened to this aspect of paranormal investigation, which this is a very important part of investigation. But it was, I don't know, about five months ago, six months ago, somewhere in there. It was around November of 2023. It opened up a whole lot of doubts as to things that I've done. Like I said, with the, the recorders, I I just thought we were recording what was there. I, I never thought to think, is that a shuffle? You know, things like that. So um, I'm questioning a lot of things that I've told people that, you know, maybe aren't paranormal that I thought were. I do have a pretty high threshold for what I'll, I'll say is paranormal and what isn't. Um, my belief is... I've never captured evidence of the paranormal. I've caught a lot of things that I can't explain. I've caught a lot of interesting things, but I don't have rock solid, take it to court proof that I've captured a ghost or a voice. Um, I suspect that I have on several occasions, but just nothing that I could, like I said, take to take to court per se. So I hope you guys like this. Let me know if you want another one. I, I've got, more paranormal content to put out more debunking content to put out. Uh, I still got fake preachers to go after those, those fake exorcists really chat my ass. So uh, we have a lot of, a lot of stuff to come. So thanks for watching.